Hello and welcome everybody. Um, my name is Patrick Okula and I welcome you to the world that has been kept relatively quiet until now. And that world is the world of hacking. Um, there have been many developments in the past couple months and uh, as you might have guessed it, um, in the next little while I hope to teach you as well as scare some of you about the what the term really means in today's world. Now before I continue, I just wanted to introduce myself really quickly. As I said, my name is Patrick Okula, and uh, I'm a fellow student from Pace University. I will be graduating in the coming weeks, um, and I study the ever-growing field of uh, technology and everything that comes with it. I've been a part of uh, every main cycle in the CSIS field. Uh, I've coded many programs and applications, uh, implemented many environments on uh, the server side, planned databases and networks. And overseen many projects, so I would consider myself very well versed in the field. Um, but I've, what I've learned in the past couple of weeks has really changed my outlook on how to keep track on technology um, because it might be the most important topic when it comes to dealing with it. Now the hacking course that I took wasn't um, through your everyday course. I took an independent study class. Um, which should be familiar to some of you PACE students. Uh, and I took it with my main resource being uh, ACM, which is the Association for Computing Machinery. Um, it is a great uh, guide into so many different topics in computing, um, going from uh, networking uh, to servers, programming, security. It just has so many topics that it covers, and it has over 90,000 members um, so it's so it's really gr a great tool to use uh, for almost any class. And the classes that I took specifically were the Ethical Hacker, which covers the ethical hacking process, as well as um, the web server side of hacking, which I both found to be extremely interesting. Um, so I'm going to go into a little bit now what hacking means and the origins of it. Now, the question arises, what is hacking? Uh, well, hacking in the broader sense is based on the individual that does it, uh, known as the hacker. Uh, in computer and security um, and in everyday language, a hacker is someone who breaks into computers and computer networks. Uh, they might be motivated by a multitude of reasons, including profit, uh, protest, or just even because of the challenge. So hacking originated in the 1950s and 60s when MIT engineers would break into the EA room of MIT to use the 30-ton IBM machine. This was actually when they coined the term hack. Um, this evolved into the 1970s when the phone freaks, as they called themselves, arose, uh, where men such as John Draper, who was known as Captain Crunch, um, and Mark Abin, uh, would hack telephone modems and use their uh, blue boxes to wiretap people and to actually make free phone calls. Uh, in the 80s, computer hacking actually began, and this is when um, people started to hack uh, the government, uh, video games, and it was the actual, actually also the first time that people were getting arrested uh, for their offenses. Uh, the 1990s brought out the internet era, which was a huge deal, um, and shot the art of hacking into the limelight. Major hackers of the time, such as Kevin Mitnick, were being put on uh, the FBI most wanted lists, and major companies such as AOL and Citibank um, were getting attacked. Now, every art form has its artist, and hacking is no different. There are such a huge number of people who pride themselves on their ability to do mayhem, and many of these individuals have even developed interesting careers out of hacking. Uh, we start with John Draper, and he's one of the first hackers ever, and he was a notorious phone freak in the 80s, that they like to call themselves. He discovered that you could use a whistle, one that he found in a Captain Crunch box, to get free phone calls. All you had to do was produce a precise tone in the receiver for the method to work. Kevin Polson, a current employee of Wired Magazine, also did work with phone lines, where he famously hacked the LA line of a radio station, ensuring that he'd be the 102nd caller which ended up winning him a Porsche. Kevin Mitnick, which is arguably one of the most famous hackers in history, started off by redirecting phone lines whichever way he wanted in the early 80s. By the 90s, he was accessing computers in the Pentagon, which called for his arrest. Now he owns and runs a huge network security firm. And uh, I would call that very ironic. 
You can thank David L. Smith for creating one of the first email viruses that haunt us all. He is the author of the notorious Melissa Worm virus, which was the first su successful email aware virus. He ended up causing $80 million of damage after he was done. Michael Kelsey started when he was quite young, 15 to be precise. Uh, he was hacking into some of the world's largest commercial websites in the world at that age. And on Valentine's Day in 2000, he used his um, hacking alias Mafia Boy to launch a number of denial of service or DOS attacks across 75 computers and 52 networks affecting sites such as eBay and Amazon. Now, there are five major parts to hacking, the last one being part of the main hack. These five parts include footprinting, scanning, enumeration, system hacking, and web server hacking, which can be part of the system hacking. A careful and precise hacker will use these five steps to introduce, infiltrate, and erase his tracks in any instance of an attack, and you will learn why it's so hard to prevent. So the first part of the process is footprinting. Now what is it? Well, how do generals plan out their attack? How do professors ready their lectures? And how do coaches beat their opponents? These are the same questions that hackers must ask themselves when getting ready to strike. It is basically blueprinting the entire operation of which you want to in infiltrate. Every hacker must first map out and understand the system that he wants to get into. Like almost any major project, without a well-structured plan, it is likely that it will fail. So how does one do this? In today's day and age, there are so many tools that hackers can use to understand their prey. Traceroute, or TracePath, is a very popular tool used, which displays the path of an IP network, as well as measures the transit delays, or hops, it takes when trying to communicate with any other machine. This can aid in understanding how a network is set up around that given host. Nmap is a very popular tool that creates a map of the network by sending out packets through the, the network and analyzing the information that comes back. The information it returns can tell you what type of device it is, what firewall it uses, what OS it is running, and the uptime of the machine. After the hacker is able to obtain IP and network information, he could begin the scanning phase. Scanning entails pinging machines to determine if the system is alive, port scanning, and determining network ranges, which all mixes in very well with footprinting as the main components of the pre-attack phase. Port scanning connects a series of ports with the purpose of finding what services are on the target's machine. Here you could also use the tool Nmap to scan and set up different levels of intensity for each wave, ranging, ranging from a stealth mode to an insane mode, which is very aggressive. Other tools, such as NetScan Proc, can translate IP addresses into different host names for the hacker. You can even use physical hardware if the hacker has access to the machine remotely, where through a floppy disk, they can actually run and mask a scan by propping the Windows blue screen of death. Enumeration would be the next step, and it is a process of finding out the weaknesses on an identified network or machine. In the past, null sessions were primarily responsible for Windows hacking, as they allow you to share a connection with, uh, without specifying any username and password anonymously. From here, you were able to get lists of users, machines, and shares that they were connected to. Programs such as SNMPUtil assist in extracting this kind of information, and tools such as SolarWinds help manage it. In war, the actual attack is what everybody waits for. There have now been designated many points of entry, the planning has been completed, and now it is time for the hacker to get into the system. He has a variety of way to, ways to do this. Password attacks is one of the initial attacks that a hacker will use, where they would try to use a strike to lure a password out of a system. This can range from trial and error guessing, over the shoulder sniffing, to dictionary attacks that try every range of words in a set dictionary. Hello, crack is a program that can even capture an individual's login session and rec can recover the passwords from that account. Other tools such as Curb Crack can listen in on a login event and use brute force to crack the session. Listening on the session is called sniffing and because guessing is tough it enables users to eavesdrop on logins and get as much information as fast as possible. Hackers will sometimes set up an SMB relay point which is a man-in-the-middle approach, and intercept all passwords and usernames for the times they were used. Keyloggers are now a huge issue as well. 
which record keystrokes and send it back to the hacker. They could be actual keyboards to ghost programs that hide deep in the computer and record your every stroke. There have even been voice recorders and webcams set up in stealth mode, which are very dangerous. There's also a new process of hiding data in images and MP3 files, things that we use in every, our everyday computing lives. And on the server side, hackers use XQL injection that exploits weak database security and gets into the layers of the application. These attackers are after important files, such as the HT access file and the SRM configuration file, which holds all the information and docu documents that reside on that server.